For over 50 years, the lineage of the original 1969 El Primero A386 chronograph has been felt within Zenith's collection as well as the greater watch world. But if you wanted to get a watch that was in that 38 millimeter case diameter, you were going to look for something that was gonna come in limited edition models or something that would come in in precious metal variation. However, in 2021, Zenith launched a new standard production Chronomaster original in stainless steel. So let's take a closer look at this fantastic piece. All right, guys, now just before we jump into this video, just a few things, kind of what we're gonna touch on. I am personally so excited about this piece. This is a watch that I really wanted to see and just looks fantastic on my wrist. I love the wearing dimensions of this, very unlike many other chronographs out there. But let's first get into the history, mostly talking about kind of more general history regarding the last few models that were unveiled from the Chronomaster collection, just to give context here. Also get into the overview of the piece and then just share some final thoughts at the end. Also, we are an authorized dealer of Zenith watches on teddybaldestar.com. So if you like what you see today, definitely head over to the website and check it out for more details and to purchase the watch. But let's first begin with just a little backstory about this piece, just to kind of set the stage. Compared to many watches that I cover on this channel, the story of the original Zenith El Primero that inspired this model is pretty well known, being a trailblazer in the development of automatic chronographs with it originally being debuted in 1969. Even 50 years later, it still sets the standard for what an integrated chronograph movement should be from an automatic perspective. And considering Rolex decided it was suitable to be housed within their Daytona for a decade, I think that speaks volumes to Zenith's prowess. This said, in order to understand the positioning of this piece, we need to focus on the specific predecessors that ultimately led to the creation of this watch that we're gonna be looking at here today. As vintage watches rose to an incredible level of prominence and value over the last 15 years or so, Zenith has done a job in integrating the core design concepts that made their vintage collections so compelling and desirable while updating watches just enough for them to stand alone as modern pieces in a heritage-obsessed marketplace. And while there have been a number of recent El Primero chronographs that flirted with the original A386 design, the brand shied away from anything too close to a true reissue. But in 2019, Zenith gave a promising tease with a trio of new watches called the Zenith El Primero A386 Revival. Cased in precious metals that visually presented a close representation of the original design, but those were highly limited with only 50 pieces per each different material, yellow gold, white gold, and pink gold, and predictably sold out almost instantly. That successful nod to the original A386 gave birth to another version called the Revival Manufacturer Edition in steel, but this time with subdials executed in different shapes shades of blue, a supposed reference to a set of prototype dials serendipitously located in Zenith's attic in 2018, alongside the alleged prototype that spawned the Chronomaster Revival Shadow. And while the manufacturer edition was theoretically not a limited edition, it was only available through Zenith's direct e-commerce platform and again, sold out pretty quickly. Fast forward to the present day and Zenith have some 52 years after the release of the original A386, given the enthusiast base the watch they have directly requested for years. A non-limited 38 millimeter stainless steel chronograph with almost identical aesthetics to the A386 original, but equipped with the new El Primero 3600 caliber, capable of one tenth of a second measurement. And just to keep things interesting, Zenith also presented a rose gold variant as well as a charming reverse panda variant in black and a blue version for their boutiques. In this video though, we're gonna concentrate on the watch people wanted the most with its distinctive gray, charcoal, and blue chronograph subdials. Starting our overview with a conversation on the case and wearing experience of this modern Chronomaster original, we have an overall design that closely follows the original watch with a 38 millimeter case diameter complemented by a lug to lug measure of just shy of 46 millimeters. Even considering the dome sapphire crystal, which is in this case intended to mimic the original acrylic crystal shape from the A386, we have a thickness of 12.7 millimeters, an impressive number for an automatic chronograph when stacking it up to the competition, a range that struggles to get many of their chronographs under 14 millimeters thick. And that thickness is also going to include one to two millimeters of thickness from the crystal as well. One other point when it comes to the thickness is that this watch has lugs that sit higher on the case, making the curvature of them not as noticeable in wear. So you will get a full feel of that lug to lug dimension. However, 
We are still talking about 46 millimeters, making this one wear pretty true to its size, if only slightly larger. On the wrist, the watch wears in the way that gives off some strong vintage vibes. And ignoring the more modern execution of the bracelet, it really looks like you might just be wearing an unbelievably well-preserved vintage A386. In terms of the presence, the 38 millimeter case wears in somewhat restrained manner, despite the lack of conventional bezel and the extra room taken up by the dial. In addition, the dial appears relatively small for the case, an effect of the chronograph scales we'll get into in a bit. In terms of finishing, the central case leans into fine brushing across the top of the case with intriguing curved base case sides and a slender bevel, all complemented with a high polish that does just enough to attract without appearing ostentatious. As mentioned, this case is not topped with any conventional style of bezel. Instead, it gives way to a flattened and polished surface that meets the base of the box sapphire crystal, giving a high reflective perimeter to the dial. Along the case's three o'clock side, a signed push-pull crown rests between the prominent pump pushers of the chronograph. Comparing this one to the vintage versions, the design is as intended, nearly identical, though the more modern bracelet does help bring this classic design into a more contemporary era just a bit. Set between 19 millimeter lugs, this new El Primero demonstrates its flashiest element, a three-length style bracelet feature brushing on the outer links and polishing on the center links as well as the outer link edges. Tapering down to 16 millimeters, the clasp, which features five points of micro adjustment, is similar essentially in every aspect to the class recently seen on the unveiled Chronomaster Sport and bears more than a passing resemblance to many Rolex bracelet offerings. The bracelet is solid, well-built, but the class sportier bulk doesn't feel at home here as it did on the Chronomaster Sport, but I think it is still going to be worth it given the unfortunate odd number lug width here. Being able to have the factory bracelet is gonna bring some nice versatility. In terms of some final notes on wear, this is one of the most compact modern chronographs that I can think of and I just, simply love this watch on my wrist. I mean, it just looks fantastic. Taking up view of the watch's anterior surface, we can zero in on the eye-catching heritage inspired dial lying beneath the box sapphire crystal. While there is a good amount of information coming from this 8386 inspired dial, this Chronomaster original remains legible, likely an effect of the use of color to break up the individual dial elements. Moving inward from the dial's periphery, we have a white one-tenth of a second rehot surrounding a black ring providing our decimeter scale. Just within, our markers consisting of applied polished faceted steel, each with a tiny strip of loom, manage time telling duties with the help of segmented baton hands executed in white with tiny black elements near their tips. Again, playing into the colorful presentation, the central chrono seconds hand is a simple red stick, adding visual interest, especially when traveling over the matte white primary dial surface and tri-color sub-registers. Matching the original reference, the dial features a dark blue 60 second sub-register at the three, a 60 minute register at the six o'clock in darker gray, and finally the running seconds at nine in a lighter silver shade. Dial text is minimal with a small apply Zenith star at the 12 o'clock position, along with the writing of Zenith and El Primero, with also mentioning of the 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate of the movement within. A date window with its own neatly positioned frame rests in between the four and the five o'clock positions. In this case, the loom is adequate, though it clearly wasn't the main impetus behind this design. And while the dial design stays as close as possible to the original watch, something decidedly modern is beating away inside. Part of Zenith's claim to fame is their in-house designed and produced automatic chronograph calibers, starting with the renowned El Primero caliber born in 1969 along with the A386, essentially setting the standard for what an automatic luxury chronograph movement should be. This modern expression of original design relies upon the updated El Primero 3600 caliber that is housed within Zenith's Chronomaster Sport as well. With help of the one tenth of a second scale sitting at the outskirts of the dial, the central chronograph hand on this watch makes one full rotation in 10 seconds, a feature that will have you doing a double take the first few times you activate it. While the utility of this feature probably doesn't equal its visual coolness, it is indeed different and demonstrates Zenith's constant approach to marrying classical watchmaking elements and chops with more daring executions. This manufactured column wheel chronograph also features a power reserve of a healthy 60 hours, made all that more impressive by the fact that this is a high beat caliber, humming away at 36,000 vibrations per hour, five hertz. The 3600 here works off an El Primero 400 architecture, featuring a lateral clutch and a silicon escapement wheel that is driving the chronograph. The movement is on full display through the sapphire case back, coming equipped with a skeletonized rotor, a common openwork design seen in many modern Zenith timepieces, offering fine engraving as well as satinized surfaces, topped off with the hallmark of the Zenith star. The rotor and the 3600's bridges come in a rather consistent muted color format, with the exception of the easily detected blue column wheel, jumping into action with the pusher engagement and creating a notable tactile response. 
The El Primero operates at 36,000 vibrations per hour, 5 hertz, features hacking and hand winding, and has a power reserve of 60 hours. So now that we've completed kind of looking a little bit deeper into this watch, some backstory into where is the context of this piece from a modern context, I wanna just discuss my final thoughts on this watch. Now, personally, I'm a huge fan of this one just because it works so well with my wrist. I just love the wearing capability of this for my wrist size. I know that doesn't speak for everybody. There's going to be some that are going to have to write this one off just given that it is a bit of a smaller chronograph. But when you take a look at the landscape of automatic chronographs from a luxury watch perspective under $10,000, you think of the regular considerations. You have your Speedmasters, maybe you look at something from Breitling, something from Tudor, for example, as well, and you know several others. But one that I feel is the most overlooked is going to be the Chronomasters. These watches, from a historical perspective and what they brought with the movement inside of them, while also having a design language that is so different in dimensions that are truly different compared to the rest of the competition. Most, again, and this is coming as a byproduct of the challenges of developing a full automatic integrated chronograph caliber. There's difficulties with that. There's a lot of reasons why most brands just opt to go for a value. A movement that alone is eight millimeters thick, but Zenith is able to manufacture these at south of 13 millimeters in thickness. And that's also keeping in mind that there's a crystal on top of this that's gonna have some heavy dome effect to it. So in terms of just actual wearability for a smaller wristed individual, these are beautiful watches to go for. When I think of the El Primero, I think of just underappreciated watchmaking. That's simply it. This is a watch for a true enthusiast, and that's what I love about this piece. It's classic in its design, and it's so true to the original, which I love. 38 millimeters, stainless steel, pretty attractive price as well in terms of where it's stacking up against the competition, getting a tenth of a second, which candidly is not that useful in day-to-day -day function unless you're maybe measuring some Olympic trial races. But other than that, not very useful, but so cool to see in action. It's just a very hypnotizing idea seeing that second hand go around once every 10 seconds. With this now being in standard production, I see this as that foundational point where Zenith can use to continue to grow. I think the new leadership of this brand is doing a fantastic job in trying to really get a pulse on what the future of this brand should be and what enthusiasts want from them. And this is one that absolutely answers to that, keeps in alignment with their past and what they've done well for years and decades. And I think they just did a fantastic job with this watch and one to absolutely look for if you're looking for a chronograph that's something different compared to the common just players in the chronograph range under $10,000. All right, guys, I'd love to see comments down below. What do you think of this new Zenith Chronomaster? Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel as well. If you're in the market for this watch, you like what you're seeing here today, definitely go check it out on teddybaldister.com, full authorized dealer of Zenith as well. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with the content and see some great photos of watches, be sure to follow along on Instagram as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.